Não, não, não. Atrás do motor, eu falei. Não, mas o rapaz é conhecido. Sabe por quê? Porque eu não posso mentir. I cannot lie. I serve God, so I cannot lie. In no way can I lie. De jeito nenhum eu não posso mentir. Você já tem de roubar de nos anos passados, senhor. Dá para você dobrar uns 3, 4 anos, plantar algum milhozinho lá, plantar. You deforested in the previous 3 or 4 years. You planted rice, beans, papunya palms. But that's already abandoned. You're now clearing another area. And next year another area. Soon you'll be living in a desert. You're a religious man. You know if we don't care for the earth, we'll lack water and fertile land. Valmir's job is to protect the forest and its greatest treasure, the immense diversity of Amazonian life. The river Guaparé is famous for its fish and for the rich bird life which feeds on them. Last year this sandbank was the birthplace of 400,000 baby turtles. Valmir's team protects the turtles from hunters, fishermen and animal traffickers. But ultimately, all their work is pointless if Ibarma fails to preserve the forest environment. Even in the river, there are countless predators. But for the animals of the Amazon, man is the ultimate predator, and deforestation means extinction. A helicopter patrol finds fresh signs of illegal logging inside a national park. By the time Valmir gets there, everyone's fled. What did you find? All Valmir can do now is to try and find anything that will help him identify and find the loggers. Valmir recently arrested 18 trucks like this in one night. But now he's going to crack down on the people who buy the timber from the truckers. It's a strategy that will take him into a dangerous fight. The town of San Domingos de Guaparé. For Valmir, its 18 smoking sawmills are the plague center of deforestation. Ibarma suspects many of these logs have been stolen from the reserves. As usual, the manager stalls over providing documents that he's obliged by law to have. Tudo lá no escritório, toda vez que sai daqui é de lá, sai da nota, sai tudo de lá. 
Não teria como você entrar em contato com o Paulo para ter o vídeo inside, por exemplo? Não, até ligar. An Ibama man warns that they're being surrounded by loggers. Mas isso tem incentivo por parte de vocês para evitar que a gente faça os pátios, que peça toda a documentação? More and more men crowd into the office. Não vai tendo problema, não vai ter agressividade nem nada. Não. Pode ficar tranquilo e pode ficar se preocupado. Ninguém vai agredir ninguém, ninguém vai maltratar ninguém, ninguém vai brigar com ninguém. Só vai começar numa boa e tal para ver o que está acontecendo. Não tem problema, a gente aguarda. Nós vamos sair daqui. Vocês vão atuar. E o que, que vai acontecer? Vocês vão fechar essa firma. E esse camarada, se ele não for fechado, ele não vai conseguir pagar o valor da multa do Ibama, que ele já é um valor desastroso, e o camarada certamente vai falir, vai fechar as portas. E o que, que vai acontecer? Vai acontecer isso que todo mundo está vendo aqui, desemprego, essa situação triste que está acontecendo aqui hoje. E que a gente precisava tentar ver se conseguia e evitar isso. Nós do comércio não queremos que a cidade pare. E não nós sim. estamos todos unidos, hein? Os madeireiros, se parar a serraria, para a serraria. Coisa que eu quero ah. Eu vou avisar isso para vocês. Nós não estamos aqui para parar. Nós não vamos aceitar isso de maneira nenhuma. Eu fico emocionado, sou o vice-prefeito eleito. Nós não vamos aceitar isso de jeito nenhum. Chega da miséria do nosso povo em troca do Ibama. O Ibama hoje é o espinho no calo de todos nós. Nós não vamos aceitar isso de maneira nenhuma. Aí tudo começa a Outnumbered, unable to inspect the timber, the Obama team suggest a compromise. Outside, the anxious crowd is waiting. They are told of the compromise. Obama will not inspect their timber, but will record the address of each sawmill. It's a victory for this remote community over the official representatives of the government. Valmir's team leave the town with their tail more or less between their legs. But they plan a counter-attack at Ibama headquarters in Ji Parana. It's Ibama's Christmas party. All the talk this year is about Le Brown, the rebellious deputy mayor. He organized the community to block Obama's work, so Obama suspended all documentation for the sale of wood from there. Suspendeu a emissão de documentos para venda de madeira e aparentemente. Apparently, the sawmills are desperate, and he's being pressured to resolve this problem, which he created for the industry. Né, por esse, esse problema que causou toda a, a categoria de madeireiros. A few days later, Lebrun is the headline. Four bullets were fired at Lebrun in his car. Before joining Ibama, Valmir made his living from the forest itself. Valmir? Oh, all these trees were planted. It was all deforested when I arrived. It's been regenerated. This whole area was cattle pasture. It's become a forest. This is Frejó. In 10 to 15 years it could be cut. There's banana, acai palms, pupunha palms, lime, banana. Deixa eu aproveitar bem aproveitado mesmo. 
Making the most of this area, I'd have an income of twelve to sixteen thousand dollars, much more than cattle pasture. Pasture would yield one or two cows per hectare. For others who wanted to develop agroforestry, Valmir founded this association, living evidence that there's an economic alternative to deforestation. These are part pupunya palm and part acai palm. The farmer signs a document of commitment, receives so many seedlings to set up agroforestry, and when it's harvested, he sells to the association. In March, an army helicopter takes Valmir back to San Domingos, following an army convoy which has already traveled ahead. It's a show of overwhelming power. The locals are obviously concerned. This school will be their base, and Lebrang and the town council come to protest. The people are asking why Obama is acting this way, as a repressive organization of brutal inspection. But there is no fighting for land here. There is no civil disturbance which justifies the army being here. Our team came here on a peaceful mission, a team of eight without a police escort. They were driven out with abuse, they were humiliated. We were only here now because we were prevented from doing our normal work in November. The battle lines are drawn, the deputy mayor Lebrun leading the community against Valmir representing the government. Lebrun conducts most of his business on the veranda of his house. His sawmill is about 200 meters away. It's called Jaguar's Water and is doing its bit to consume the forest. A hundred years of growth reduced to planks. An Ibama team measured the logs and planks to check if they match the documentation. Any wood above what's licensed will incur a fine. Todo tipo de fiscalização brasileira. All inspections in Brazil are a money-making device, a machine for fines. They play many tricks, hide a lot of wood. Often when we try to do it quicker, we get nervous, but I don't know any other way of measuring wood. While the measuring goes on, Another team checks the officers for their licenses and ATPF movement orders. Since any undocumented wood incurs a fine, 
The industry is notorious for its cheating. Lebrun shows Valmer the car in which they try to assassinate him. Ele pegou aqui, dobrou essa chapa e a bala caiu aqui dentro. E o outro tiro, esse vidro aqui. Ele, tava perto, ele tinha até um, uma lâmina desse vinil, né? A bala passou mais ou menos por aqui assim e pegou no meio dele do lado de lá. Então passou no seu queixo mais ou menos. É por aí, né? O cara tirou, eu parei assim, a moto tava ali assim. Ele, o primeiro tiro, ele saiu, o primeiro tiro veio de lá pra cá. Aí depois lencou, o revólver dele lencou, duas vezes. Aí eu arranquei e aí depois saiu o seguinte, saiu quatro tiros. The Obama team have come across an attempt to cheat them. We've discovered 150 concealed logs. The sawmill probably removed them from their timber yard because of Obama's operation. If the timber had been in his yard, he would have lost the logs but also received a fine and a lawsuit. Waiting for the next truck, Valmer talks to a passing timber buyer. People said it was Lebrun who moved this. Was it him? I can't say anything. Talking of Lebrun, last year I seized his wood and he was fined $20,000. Let's suppose this wood is his. He'll have a great loss again. With this continuing, do you think he can survive? He'll close down. No one can resist two blows like that. And so if we continue, the sawmill industry will have to work legitimately or quit the business. The excess wood in the timber yards enters Obama's computers. The fines are beginning to mount. Donna Neuza, LeBrown's wife, is convinced she knows what will happen. We're going to have to change our business because Valmir is after us. He's following Lebrun's tracks. Though Lebrun's difficult to catch because, as his nickname suggests, he jumps like a hare. Lebrun means the big hare. What we're doing is not just about Lebrun, but all the sawmills. It's not personal. When Lebrun was fined before, Others were fined too. The anonymous logs hidden in the forest are stockpiled in LeBrown's timber yard. The logs will be given to charity, and LeBrown has offered to saw the wood free of charge. Valmer's operation is to stop wood being stolen from the reserves. So Valmer decides to inspect a nearby Indian reserve. It's over a million hectares of table mountains and secretive valleys.
Along with the spider monkeys, the mountains are also home to unknown indigenous groups of Indians. The Indians sometimes shelter in these caves. There's evidence of 40 such groups in the Amazon, still desperately hiding from contact with outsiders. On one flight, the helicopter crew photographs one of these small, completely unknown Indian groups. They have plastic sheets and pots stolen from the invaders of the reserve. An Indian woman stands in front with a bow and arrow and shoots at the helicopter. Follow-up flights discovered that invaders of the reserve have set up huts and illegal plantations very close to the Indians. A combined Ibama and Indian agency team go in to get the invaders to leave. Você acha que nós estamos próximo dos índios? Olha, nós estamos ainda a 8 km, mas aquele barraco está exatamente a 5 km que a gente vai. Então a qualquer momento pode encontrar com o índio aqui, acidentalmente. Perto desses índios, tem que ficar muito alerto que, que pode levar uma flechada aí. At the sound of the helicopter, everyone has fled. So they burn the huts to discourage invasion to let the Indians live in peace. Unfortunately, the action fails. A flight to the Indian hut reveals that it too has been burnt. Possibly by invaders, but possibly the Indians abandoned it once the helicopter discovered their location. Back in San Domingos, everything seems normal. The army's having an easy time, but the cat and mouse game still goes on. This is a hiding place for sawn planks. According to my information, they're from the sawmill of Zegarapa. They're probably from the reserves, the parks, so have no official origin. Planks are obviously more valuable than logs. And that night, while the Obama people are off duty, the area is cleaned out. Next evening, Valmir comes up with a trick of his own. He orders his team to eat outside on a veranda of a bar, so everyone can see that they've finished work for the day. And then he launches a sudden raid. Qual é a madeira que você falou? J.O.T.I.S. Mas onde que é o endereço dela? É aí. Tá puxando a madeira pra onde? Puxando, ela tava aqui na madeira aqui do lado, aqui, ó. Tá 
What's happening? They're moving wood from place to place within the forest, which is very dense here. To hide it from you? Exactly. Yesterday they carried off 300 cubic meters. Today it's about 80 to 100 cubic meters. They're working at night to cheat the inspection. In case the tractor tries to escape, Ibarma follows behind. The next day, the arrested bulldozer is helping to stack confiscated logs. And more and more are piling up in Le Brown's sawmill, compounding his complex relationship with Valmir. Valmir is a man who needs to be well protected. Today, whoever tries to make improvements in our industry really runs the risk of being killed. Valmer is a marked man. Do you know I'm 50 years old today? Do you hear, Valmer? Congratulations. I hope your present won't leave a bitter taste. <laughs> and still the fines continue to add up. It's beside the river Guaporé at Costa Marquis, the capital of the municipality, that the counter-attack against Valmir is mounted. This is the town council building. For us, the representatives of the people, it's difficult to accept this mission to Costa Marquez, a terrorist mission, bringing in the army, working as police. I think the army should have other duties. For me, Senor Valmir is persona non grata. Ibama is perhaps one of the most corrupt organizations, particularly in our region. Our information is that for honest sawmills, Ibama delay six to seven months to release 35 ATPFs. But for fake sawmills, they arrange a great quantity, sold at $800 each. I have confidence in Valmir, a serious and honest person. But within Ibama there is a real mafia. It is not within the sawmills. Their pressure on me to relax the inspection only makes me intensify it. If they had more political power, they'd expel me from Ibama. They've been making threats. The bandits of Rondonia are the political class. The governor, some deputies, some senators. These are the people I fear. A few days later, the mayor, Elio de Assis, arrives at LeBron's house. Yeah. 
Vocês estão indo embora ou... Não, já não tá indo embora. Pra que essa pressa, rapaz? Tem mel aqui nessa cidade? É. Eu sou apaixonado por Aston Marques. Tem todo um carinho especial pra aqui mesmo. Apesar de ser pessoa não grata... Falaram nisso. Falaram nisso. Tem dinheiro sobrando, Lélio. He'll be even less welcome now that it's a day of reckoning for Lebron and the other sawmill owners. Luis Carlos Poledori e Costa stored 545.17 cubic meters, a fine of $34,100. Jaguar's water stored 849.95 cubic meters of logs without ATPFs, fine $35,400. The same Jaguar's water sold 12.144 cubic meters of logs without ATPFs, fine $800. They also tried to deposit 582 cubic meters of logs, which were confiscated. I'm going to name this operation Vengeance Number One. It's unjust. I'll prove it's unjust. I insist on demonstrating it's unjust. I will not agree to this fine. The timber man is not the villain of the story, not the father of the crime. He makes the most of the raw material available. He is a renewer of the forest. Unfortunately, today he's considered a bandit, a destroyer of the environment. I don't see it that way. I won't accept it. I'm taking the heat for the timber industry. Today I'm paying a price which the Obama people think is very high. For me it's very small. Because my bankruptcy will be the beginning of a new era for the timber industry. You'll see. The only people who'll stay in the industry will be those who work by the book. For these cheats, the pressure's too great. They'll be charged with a crime, have to go to court. You've seen the fines are too big to make it worth operating illegally. Refusing to accept his fine, LeBron drives off. In May, the previous year's deforestation figures are announced. It's the second highest total ever. Bad news for the fight against global warming. But there's even worse news for Obama's reputation. In the neighboring state of Mato Grosso, Hugo Wuerl, the local head of Obama, has been arrested together with another 84 people, many of them Obama staff. They're accused of supplying false ATPF documents, corrupt involvement in illegal timber sales. Back in his hometown, Je Paraná, Valmir launches a follow-up investigation which leads to a night operation. <coughs> to avoid leaks, the police are briefed at 3 a.m. And by dawn are blocking all the doors of an Obama official's house. Jose Magoyais was one of Valmer's staff. He'd been with Valmir months before at Obama's Christmas party. At police headquarters, the charges against him and another Obama official are generally linked to the false movement orders for illegal timber. 
the same issue that the Obama staff were arrested for in the neighboring state. E aí é uma, esse tem um trabalho já de uns quatro meses que vem sendo feito isso, né? Essa investigação, é, escuta o telefone, enfim, não sei como os meta para federal lá. Summer in G Palanar brings the annual parade of ranchers and farmers. People who by definition got their land by cutting down the forest. The numbers at the parade make it obvious that most of the state's population are against Valmir. The ranchers must feel threatened by you. Without doubt. The timbermen, of course. But the ranchers, too. I don't like to talk about this because it's very personal, but I believe my days are numbered. I really think they're numbered. Then why won't you accept bodyguards? It's no solution. When you're picked out to die, someone pays a gunman to kill you. There's no mercy. The man is watching you, and at your first slip, a bullet strikes without you even knowing where it came from. Thinking about whether it's better to go armed or not, I suggest it's better to go unarmed and rely on the tongue, on the word. The long wet season is finally at an end. The dry season is the time when most illegal logging takes place. But this year, Obama have a new weapon. In the past, the Brazilian Space Agency had taken over a year to provide satellite information on deforestation, by which time it's too late for Obama to stop the cutting. In Costa Marques, for example, here in Costa Marques, for example, these red dots are deforestations detected this last month. This is a new system you're using? The detection has existed for some time, but its operational use has only started now, in 2005. We produce a map, and with this map, we produce a table of coordinates so that the pilot can arrive at the deforestation. So you can arrive 16 days after the first cut of the forest? Exactly. Using the satellite map, Valmir flies to a large area cleared of forest. It looks as if it's still being cut. The worker's hut is still there. Along with the workers. For once, they haven't fled. Valmir confiscates the bill hooks and chainsaws. <laughs> the fine notice to be handed on to the rancher is for a massive $350,000. They fly across last year's deforestation to the ranch house. Okay. 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 
Você tá bom? Gente? O senhor Ademar, o Ademar? Eu sou Ademar. Aí o senhor não pode roubar mais lá, já que recolhi as ferramentas e, a, e, o, e, e o motocerro, tá? Entende? Isso aqui é uma posse, né? Uma posse de 50 anos. Então nós fizemos tudo junto ao IBAM para tentar uma licença para fazer essa derrubada, certo? E não existe, não existe licença em cima de, de posse, né? O que, que a gente tem que fazer? Né? Ficar quieto ou arriscar, né? This burning is inside the Bonfaturo National Forest, where Valmer finds two bulldozers clearing the trees. Ô, de casa! Vou quebrar essa porra, hein? The drivers have fled and are hiding nearby. Se vai escutar, vai aparecer essa loja, vou quebrar, hein? Aparece, nós vamos quebrar! Já pegou fogo no pelo. Já pegou fogo na borracha lá, vendo? Já pegou fogo na borracha já. Ei, é, Gil, é, cuidado. Pegou cuidado, vai explodir essa porra aí, ó. Pegou fogo na borracha lá. At the second bulldozer, he cuts the fuel pipes. The drivers know he can't take the bulldozers with him, and they're just waiting for the helicopter to leave. As he sets the fire, the bulldozer's radio receives a belated warning about Ibama's arrival. Trees are still being cut down. But the good news is that the rate of deforestation is lower than last year, according to the latest satellite estimate. For all of Amazonia, including Valmir's state of Rondonia, the rate decreased by 40% in 2005. But Valmir knows he can't rest. Como é que você anda com o caminhão sem documento? Com o documento não, não, eu só vim aqui, não tá caro aqui, ó. Mas me dá o seu documento aí. Não tem documento. Aqui. Levanta a camisa aqui. Não, 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 tá, tem uns caras, vamos tomar o bucho no quebrado. Você não tem documento do caminhão? Não, em casa tem, ainda é tudo lá, né? Vou ter que consolar a galinha, né? Antes o helicóptero explodir no chão, né? É, vovó, nós vamos se fuder, hein? Olha só que dá tempo, só que dá tempo. Só que dá tempo. <risos> Obama acamped out with the police. Fala, E é uma honra muito grande para nós. Um, dois, três. Parabéns para você nessa data querida. Muitas felicidades. Muitos anos de vida. Parabéns para você. Back in Costa Marcas, a few months after Obama's operation against the sawmills here, Lebron is still bitter. I was investigated by the federal police, where I made a statement 40 or 50 days ago. They've opened an inquiry which names me as one of the people threatening the life of Valmir de Jesus. For my part, I hope he lives many, many years to repent of the many things that, in my opinion, he did wrong. So that he sees what's happening today with unemployment in Costa Marques. O que acontece no meio social, principalmente aqui na cidade de Costa Marques? Beside Lebron's veranda, now empty, is the buyer of Lebron's sawmill. 
After the inspection, were there many bankruptcies here? Plenty. Can you manage to work 100%? 100% is impossible with Obama, but at least 90%. The sawmill has a new sign and a new company name. And the building has a fresh coat of green paint, stressing the business is no longer LeBron's. Todo empresário que teve grandes atuações ou latifundiários the businessmen who received huge fines, the ranchers who also received enormous fines, and fathers who today see their children and families suffering from economic hardship, you can be sure that any one of these people has the desire to eliminate Senor Valmer de Jesus. That's my opinion. I'm told I'll be dead soon. To be influenced by that would be cowardice. If you want to transform society, you have to take risks. You can't let fear stop you making improvements for your people. Things are moving. When I started this idea 15 years ago, they said it was crazy. Plant trees? No. But today, there are many people changing. And if they don't, you'll find them. Exactly. <laughs>